everyone loves the arms. I just did a radio hit in Atlanta, and all they wanted to do was talk about the quarterbacks and the guys at the top of the board. And again, I think this is the perfect time to reset and take a look at some of the names that are committed, who might be looking around, and, and maybe some names to know. So let's start at the top of the at the top of the list. Excuse me, Bryce Underwood, number one ranked quarterback, and you're going to see him followed by a few other guys that have made early decisions. I, you know, a lot to like about this group, Tom. But let's start with Bryce Underwood, number one ranked prospect, committed to LSU back in January. He has started more games than anyone in this class. Forty and two record, 120 touchdown passes. What's the latest buzz right there? I'm assuming he is solid to the Tigers. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When I left Las Vegas, the next one's event, uh, you know, presented by Nike, I was a little on the fence. There, when I talked to Bryce, there was a lot of for now and right now and things like that. Um, but after talking to some people close to him over the last week or so, it seems he's rock solid to LSU. He seems like the only visit he wants to take is to Baton Rouge and check out LSU. So barring a change, barring something completely unexpected, I do think he's going to stick with his decision to go to LSU. They picked LSU for the right reasons. Those right reasons are still there. Um, I'm not sure anything's going to change his mind at this point. You think about LSU, it's the number three ranked recruiting class right now. I think you can make a case in my eyes. It might be my favorite recruiting class. You got him, the Corian Moore, Harlem Berry, Brian Kelly has it cooking right now in Baton Rouge. Move into quarterback number two, George McIntyre, committed to Tennessee, in-state kid. I'm assuming the Vols are in good shape here for George McIntyre, right, Tom? Oh, yeah. This kid has wanted to be a volunteer for a long time. He is rock solid, couldn't be more locked in. I know you're really high on him, man. There's a lot to like, as you see on the screen right now. This kid is a big-time talent, big-time arm. It's a massive gift for Josh Heupel, keeping this kid in-state. Uh, you know, he kind of made it seem like the volunteers chose him. It's what he was born to do, play quarterback at the University of Tennessee. So big get for Tennessee. He is 100% locked into the Vols. Yeah, you mentioned I like him. I've been watching these quarterbacks the past two weeks. George McIntyre, you know, only won two games as a junior. You scratch your head a little bit and you dive into the tape and you're like, okay, he is still what I thought he is in terms of what he could be at some point down the line. Talk about a six foot five frame athletic kid. I think his ability to put the ball deep, he might have the best deep ball in the class. And at first glance, he might not think that, but he's got the tools. He can deliver it on pinpoint accuracy. That two, that three ball, it certainly stands out for George McIntyre. And I think he's kind of got some Nico Iamalieva to his game in terms of how dangly he is. He can get out of trouble. Not exactly a run first guy, but he can beat you to the corner. He can move the sticks. All right, Tom, moving to our third quarterback, another guy you saw at the next one's event, uh, Super Bowl weekend out in Las Vegas, Tavian St. Clair. He's been a darling behind the scenes at 24-7 Sports, Ohio State commit. Uh, I thought this guy not only took a major step forward between his freshman and sophomore seasons, but a massive leap that's sophomore to junior year. What do we need to know about the Buckeyes pledge? He's another one that seems rock solid to the Buckeyes. Uh, he seems completely locked in. Um, yeah, you, you you said it best, man. Major growth from year two to year three. I'm not going to lie. At first, I was a little on the fence about the initial take. I thought Ryan Montgomery was a more polished passer in state. I thought he was the guy that Ohio State was really going to move on. But the more I get around Tavian St. Clair, the more I love both of them. I think they're tremendous talents. But getting to be around Tavian, watching him throw it around in Vegas, I am so excited about this kid. I mean, you and I were texting as soon as the event wrapped up that I just, I think, I know he's super high ranked. He's number 12 overall, but stock up for this kid. Really excited to see what he does this fall. Methodical as a passer. That's what I wrote down uh, in my notes. And, I, you know, he's got the arm talent where he can pump, reset, uh, and distribute. And then that frame, you know, six foot three, 200 pounds. You said he looks like a linebacker out there. I'm fired up. Hopefully we get to see him at the Elite 11 finals or one of these camps moving forward. Tom, another favorite for the Oyster Boys uh, and really everyone at 24-7 Sports. Remember, we got a rankings update coming up here uh, in the near future. But Keon Russell, SMU commit out of Duncanville, Texas. This is DeCorian Moore, our number one ranked wide receiver, uh, his quarterback. And this is another guy that has won a lot of games, committed to Rhett Lashley, uh, and De'Ara King, the former Miami signal caller, who's now on staff there in Dallas. Florida's lingering. Who else, Tom? 
Yeah, there's there's a lot of schools pushing, and one one that I'm really watching that intrigued me when when Russell and I spoke earlier this week, he mentioned that Texas has been reaching out and communicating with him, which normally I'm like, that's that's awesome. You know, he's a big time talent in state. They have KJ Lacey committed, so that's kind of intriguing. I don't know if Texas's plan is to take two quarterbacks. I'm not sure Lacey would love that. I'm not sure Keelan Russell would choose to go play for Texas if that was the case. But it's just something to monitor. That one really caught me off guard. If they decide to offer, it's going to make me question a little bit about where things stand with K.J. Lacey and what's going to move, happen moving forward. Uh, Florida, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, very much involved. Baylor, Houston, UCLA, and Cal. Um, at this point, if SMU holds on to his commitment, massive win for that coaching staff. It's just really tough to see it happening because there's so many heavy hitters uh, pushing for him, and, and there's so much to like about this kid. Stock up. Um, you were the first one to really, I mean, from between us at B Battle Miami, and a lot of guys were there, but, man, you were raving about this kid. And the more I watch, the more I like Keelan Russell's big-time talent. <laughs> right, Lashley, man, I, I mentioned him there at SMU. Remember the – uh, Mustangs are, are moving to the ACC. You think about the quarterbacks that Rhett Lashley has worked in, in the past. I said De'Ara King, you know, Preston Stone. We saw what he was able to do last year for SMU. It's an exciting offense. And SMU, man, they are aligned as anyone. Uh, well, I would say at the group of five level. But again, they're moving into the ACC just with their collective and what's going on. So I would not rule SMU out here. Tom, another guy that is a dual threat talent. We've kind of had all, the, all of them our guys that are athletic and move around. But Deuce Knight, the lefty out of Mississippi, longtime Notre Dame commit. You came on this show, I think a week ago, tossed out that hour or shared with us that Alabama has been involved in the recruitment. Anything new with Deuce Knight? I believe he's scheduled to be in South Bend here in the near future. Yeah, he's got the only trips he has locked in right now are trips to South Bend to check out Notre Dame, to hang out with head coach Marcus Freeman, Gino Goduli and the guys. So he'll be there in March. Um, he'll be there again in April for the spring game. So he's got multiple visits lined up to check out Notre Dame. So all well there, except, again, he's still talking to Alabama. He's still talking to Ole Miss. Alabama, in my opinion, still looks like the biggest threat to potentially land him um, outside of, obviously, Notre Dame. So keep an eye on the visit. If he visits, I think Notre Dame fans need to be, you know, on edge, kind of freaking out. I'm not going to lie. Um, the alarms need to be going off. But, again, until he locks one in, until he tells me, hey, Tom, I'm visiting Alabama, you can report it, um, I think all is well right now for Notre Dame. But, again, just be patient. I, I will say one other thing. Deuce Knight and I were talking recently, and he was talking about a little bit how frustrated he was in Atlanta at the Under Armour camp. He was a little frustrated with his own performance, and he did a lot of things that he's not used to. But I will share, he actually started recently working with QB Country's David Morris, um, and then obviously in Nashville is Thomas Morris, his brother. There's a potential for them to be working there. These are two guys that I really, really respect from a quarterback uh, evaluation and process and, and just as quarterback coaches. So the fact that they're working with Deuce Knight, it's a big plus for Notre Dame moving forward because this guy's only going to get better. He's only going to be cleaned up, get everything a little tighter. So he's finally working with a respected national quarterback coach that's going to take that talent to the next level. So really excited about that, really excited about his future. I think he might be the most athletic of the bunch, and the and the testing numbers back that up, right? Four or five uh, in the 40-yard dash. Uh, he's got a short shuttle time, and then the jumps, 40-inch vert uh, on file. Uh, just needs to keep improving as a passer. Excited to see, obviously, his senior season and, and more of him on the camp circuit. One more committed arm that we're going to talk about here in, in this six standouts category. Julian Lewis, Juju, the reclassification, moved up years. He's going to miss his senior year at Carrollton High School. But, Tom, after digging into his tape, you know, watching him at Under Armour Atlanta, I don't have questions about him being ready to go at the next level. Longtime commit to USC, but a ton of other schools involved. And, and they are wide-ranging. Indiana, Colorado, Alabama, Georgia, who else? Yeah, people took my comment about Indiana like I was saying he was going to flip from USC to Indiana, which was not the case. I was simply saying Indiana was involved. They got him on campus. The visit went really well. He's got a great relationship with Tino Sinceri. They're going to be involved moving forward. Do I think he's going to land there? No, I absolutely don't. But I also don't think he's going to end up sticking with his commitment to USC. I think there's just other heavy hitters involved here. Um, Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, Colorado, um, 
To be honest, I, I still like George as the biggest threat here. Alabama really likes him and Deuce Knight. Those are probably the two top priorities there. I really do believe Deuce Knight is Alabama's number one option, and Juju's right there. Maybe a 1A, 1B situation. Um, but I really do think that if, if you know, signing day was today, if I had to make one final crystal ball, I'd probably throw it in on Georgia to land Juju Lewis. I, I just think that they're they're going to be really tough to beat moving forward. But there's some heavy hitters still involved. USC is going to do everything they can to keep them in the class. But that's going to be an, an interesting recruitment to track moving forward. Oh, potential crystal ball. I was talking with someone in Athens over the weekend, and they said Julian Lewis, when he worked out for the Dogs this past summer, that's how it's supposed to look in terms of his ability to distribute the football. I wrote on his scouting report, which is on 24-7 Sports now, de facto point guard back there. I, he is one of the best pure passers we have seen in recent cycles. A bit on the smaller side, uh, but he's kind of got that it to him. Um, some Houdini-like magic as he gets out of trouble and always keeping those eyes downfield. <laughs> 